And now I have the pleasure to invite our first keynote speaker, uh, Professor Adrian Tseuk, uh, who is a professor of pervasive computing at City University of London. Uh, but here he came from Malaysia, where, where he is establishing a new research laboratory. Uh, his speech will be about every sense, everywhere communication. Professor Chiao, please. Thank you. Oh no. Good morning, everyone, and uh, uh, thank you for the uh, uh, kind organizers to uh, invite me to this uh, conference. Uh, it's been a great conference. Yesterday was a great day, so many interesting talks. And also, uh, uh, Turku is an uh, amazing uh, uh, city, and uh, I had the pleasure to see the castle uh, on Tuesday afternoon and uh, go through all the uh, castles, so it's a really exciting uh, place. I used to live in Japan, so, uh, and uh, in Japan also Kyoto it was an ancient capital, so Turku kind of reminds me of the uh, ancient capital in Japan, Kyoto. So uh, today, uh, as mentioned, I'm going to be uh, talking about how we can connect all of our five senses to the internet through augmented and mixed reality. There's a famous story of a samurai, uh, you might know this story, and uh, he could uh, uh, win the battle uh, even though he, he was blind. And uh, he was blinded, but he won the final battle. And uh, uh, this is because he could perceive the world with his other senses. So again, again we should be like this samurai and uh, use all of our senses to connect to the world and connect to the internet. But if you think about it, right now, uh, most of our, almost all of our communication through internet is uh, audio-visual and uh, through a glass. Either you're looking through the glass of your uh, laptop or you're touching the glass of your tablet or smartphone. And uh, everything is behind the glass. It's as if in the real world you could uh, look through the window, but you can't open the window. You can't touch, you can't taste, you can't smell. And that's what it's like now. And related science also has uh, uh, shown that in, that in fact more, more than half of our communication is nonverbal. And that's why we miss a lot of uh, essential communication when we're communicating through internet. Uh, email, uh, chat, or Skype. That's why it's still very different uh, to uh, attend the conference physically together. People still uh, bother to travel because it's still different from communicating through internet when we're physically present. Uh, for those of you last night at the dinner, you'll, I'm sure you agree you can't, you can't have such an interesting dinner and uh, communicate with each other if it was through Skype last night. So uh, I believe that uh, in the future, that through the internet, uh, through augmented reality, uh, we will be able to communicate with all of our senses. And we'll move from the age of information that we live in today. Uh, we basically have access to essentially infinite data. But uh, in the future, we'll be able to not only share data, but share our actual human experiences through the internet. So we'll go from the age of information communication to the age of experience communication. So I'll start off with vision and of course most of the, uh, when we think about AR we normally think about uh, augmenting our vision and head mount displays or through tablets or uh, mobile phones and uh, that's how I started in this uh, area of, which was uh, uh, looking uh, at uh, augmented reality and uh, uh, head mount displays and how can we augment in the indoor and outdoor 
situations. And, uh, to, and uh, to tell you the truth, I was in Singapore at the time and, uh, and uh, received a very big grant from the Defence Science uh, Technology Agency in Singapore to do a, a wearable computer uh, augmented reality system for soldiers in uh, urban combat so they could see like labels on the buildings and look down and, and see where are the sewers etc because if there was ever a war in Singapore which is basically city-state it, it would be urban combat uh, and uh, we, we, we got quite a lot of money uh, for doing the research now so how can we use this uh, these uh, systems that uh, you know we developed uh, for real real society for uh, for consumers and for uh, everyday life and uh, I uh, <clears throat> wanted to see can we use uh, mixed reality for new kinds of communication, new kinds of uh, learning, uh, new kinds of uh, entertainment, new kinds of play. So uh, when I was a young boy uh, I, re I, I was uh, really enjoying playing Pac-Man, that was kind of my generation, Pac-Man on the on uh, big machines in the arcades, and I used to love playing Pac-Man. So I thought, with, it, with this technology, we can become the human Pac-Man. So uh, you can uh, be the uh, Pac-Man and, and uh, see the cookies in the physical world, in the, in the city streets, and you walk through and uh, collect the cookies like you're a Pac-Man, and your friends who are ghosts uh, are chasing you physically in the street. But uh, uh, but there is a direct correlation between your body and the virtual avatar. So you become the, uh, the human Pac-Man. Uh, so I'll show you a short video of, of this system now. A wearable computer with a head-mount display and various sensors which we have, which is sensing my uh, body position and as well as the head orientation. So we know exactly where I am and what I'm looking at. So when we do this, we can then augment the real world which I'm in now with the virtual world. So this Pac-Man world, I'm seeing it as part of the real world. I can see cookies in front of me and I'm walking through them as if I'm the human Pac-Man. Now, uh, that was uh, uh, more than 10 years ago, so uh, uh, that, that, that wearable computer was three or four kilos <laughs> that, that, we, that we built with my students. But now, of course, you can do exactly the same thing with your uh, uh, smartphone. And in fact, uh, 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 some of the uh, uh, AR uh, toolkits, uh, they have a Pac-Man layer, so you can do kind of same thing with your mobile phone. So in fact, uh, uh, the, 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 the research 10, 15 years ago now, is now has become actual real commercial products. So we've made a lot of progression with uh, uh, augmented reality with vision. Now, sound actually is uh, something uh, we often don't think about uh, when we're thinking about uh, augmenting reality, although yesterday we had a very good, very good talk, if you saw, uh, about uh, sound. But um, if you think about it, the sound was the very first mass augmented reality. Before uh, Sony invented the Walkman, uh, there was no real way to have a personal sound. If you play some music, yeah, Everyone can hear it. Um, once Sony brought the Walkman out, it was the first time we could have personalized sound. And so we have, all, we have already augmented reality with sound uh, for many years. It's the first uh, type of augmented reality that we saw in the mass market. But there is still, uh, there is still a lot of things we can, uh, interesting augmented reality we can do with sound, especially when you think about sound plus interaction uh, and uh, I want to give you an example of a, a system which was made by uh, one of one of our former students uh, uh, in Japan and uh, so um, uh, in Japan in the summer it rains a lot there's a lot of uh, monsoons and things so people have to carry the umbrella all day because it can suddenly rain uh, also where I'm currently in Malaysia uh, and it's very boring to carry the umbrella when it's not raining. So, he, so with this system here, he turned the, the umbrella into an interactive sound system, a virtual uh, samurai sword. Let's have a look at this uh, video.
So here's uh, special moves that you can do. Now when it's cold like it is in Finland, you can also enjoy this system and feel like a superhero. It measures your muscle uh, pressure. And you can combine these two systems. Okay, so you can see sound, uh, just even just sound by itself can be a very interesting uh, augment, augmented reality. And uh, so uh, we, we can uh, think more carefully about uh, audio uh, augmented reality. Uh, so now I'll move on to the uh, three senses, touch, taste and smell, which uh, we, we rarely talk about when we're talking about AR or augmented reality, but uh, they're very important senses. Uh, and touch is uh, probably one of our uh, basic sense. We probably developed before audio, before vision. And uh, it's also been shown that it's uh, essential for uh, humans to have touch. Uh, there was a study done on infant rhesus monkeys. Uh, and uh, they, put, they gave the infant monkey a choice between a, a, a realistic furry monkey mother, but no uh, food, no milk, uh, and a kind of wire cage uh, mother, but with the milk. Uh, and the infant would choose the furry, like kind of realistic uh, monkey and hug uh, the, fa the fake mother, uh, almost to the point of death. They have to stop these experiments. Uh, so it shows that uh, somehow we, uh, at least for the uh, the monkeys, they, they needed the touch more than the food, more than the nutrition. And uh, 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 I, I think if it's humans also uh, very similar. If uh, uh, it's, there's, a, there's been stu studies shown that infants who are not uh, touched enough or hugged enough, uh, uh, they can suffer from much higher infant mortality. So I think humans also uh, have a very basic need to be touched. But uh, the problem is that it's very difficult to touch through the internet, through touch through augmented reality now. I uh, also want to just quickly show that, uh, uh, related to what I was just saying, that uh, touch is probably not a, uh, the, the need for touch is probably more physiological rather than uh, cultural. And uh, this is a study of uh, uh, where <clears throat> people touch each other uh, and in Japan and in US. And uh, so with the uh, opposite sex friend, uh, we touch almost everywhere. Uh, same sex friend, mainly on arms. Uh, and mother, hands and uh, head. And uh, unfortunately, fathers get the least, uh, least touched. Uh, but similar place to mother. So uh, the places where we touch each other are, uh, are common across the uh, different countries, but uh, the intensity uh, or frequency of touch uh, changes. Uh, so in US, people touch each other much more frequently than in Japan. And uh, I'm not sure where Finland is on the spectrum, but maybe maybe somewhere in between. But it goes to show that, uh, that the touch is a universal. So I wanted to develop uh, augmented reality touch. And uh, I thought at first the, uh, uh, a, a very good, good way to start on this research is to look at uh, human and animal uh, touch. Because uh, uh, if you're um, at work or at school uh, or at a conference, uh, you still can't telephone to your pet because uh, we, we, we still can't uh, speak to, talk to animals. But I hope we can 
in the future. Uh, and uh, so I made a system where you can hug a virtual, uh, a, 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 sorry, hug a physical doll which was, uh, had pressure sensors and then this information was transmitted through the internet and then the pet, in this case the pet chicken, felt the hugging on her body through the internet. And so this is an interactive human pet uh, touch communication system. And uh, at, at next, I, next uh, I wanted to see can we use such system for human to human uh, communication. And uh, we made a system which was called a hugging pyjama uh, where parents and children can hug each other through the internet. Uh, so uh, the mother uh, may be very busy uh, at work or at a conference uh, or maybe the children's at school. And, uh, but uh, with this system here, uh, you can hug each other through the internet. Not only can you telephone your child or do a Skype call, but you can hug them, uh, you can hug them at the same time. So I'll show a, uh, a video of this uh, 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 prototype. The future is coming fast. And your world will never be the same. There are few things in life more comforting or intimate than a nice big hug. No technology, it was awesome. At the Mixed Reality Lab in Tokyo, Japan, Dr. Adrian Chio and his team are making it possible to reach out and hug someone, even if that someone isn't there. Adrian, uh, at this mixed reality lab, you have a lot of strange things going on. I can't figure this one out. It looks like a cross between a torturous life vest, rain jacket. What is going on? And who is this? Well, this is uh, Nancy, my student. And uh, mixed reality is not just about visuals. It's also about mixing all of our senses with the, with the virtual world, okay. including touch. Touch. So this is a touch vest. That's right. Through the internet now, you can email someone, you can do video chat, but you can't touch someone, you can't hug someone. So with this oh, sure you can. No, no, no. I've seen people do it all the time. You put a little asterisk, you say <laughs> hug, and then you put another asterisk, and then they know you've sent them a hug. It's so important for human communication to touch and hug each other. So Justin Timberlake brought sexy back. You're bringing hugs back. That's right. How does this replicate a real hug? And if you just uh, uh, give a hug. My expert hug? Yes. We did a study of expert huggers such as yourself, okay. and where you put your hands is where we put our special hugging actuation system on the body. Hugging actuation system. So this uh, system here okay. will replicate the feeling of where you so are. So it's going to apply some pressure with my hands. Exactly. Quickly. It gives a kind of feeling of the human hand caress okay. on, on your body, on, Let, the, on the body. Let's see it work. With Nancy far, far away in another location, Adrian takes out a controller and transmits his virtual hug via the internet. And then you can see that this hugging pajama is connected to the internet, produces the hug in the same spot. We can both wear such jackets and then interactively we can have a hugging and pressing together through right. the internet. Okay, so uh, uh, now that was a little bit uh, clunky because that was, you know, as a lab lab prototype. But actually, the uh, uh, my PhD student who uh, uh, was on the, working the project actually uh, now has a uh, company called uh, T Jacket, and they're actually selling this uh, hugging jacket, and uh, it's uh, washable, uh, it's uh, fully wearable, it has batteries. Uh, and the application uh, actually uh, is for autistic children uh, so because uh, apparently autistic children, when they have a panic attack, if they're tightly squeezed uh, by anyone, uh, it can redu reduce their panic. So uh, this system uh, allows parents uh, to monitor, monitor their child uh, heart rate and other parameters through the smartphone. And uh, if it looks like the autistic child is... Uh, Got having a panic attack, they can send the squeeze uh, hug through the internet to this uh, uh, wearable jacket that the child wears. But uh, uh, although that is very uh, uh, good to do applications for autistic children, uh, but uh, we also want to, wanted to make something uh, 
uh, much smaller. I, I felt that uh, it's still a very long time before people uh, uh, would wear uh, body jacket systems uh, every day. Um, and we, and uh, if you think about it, if, for everyday life, uh, people uh, feel very comfortable wearing things such as uh, watches and necklace, uh, earrings, and uh, and rings. So I think uh, if we make uh, the technology in, in such a such a form factor, it's a much higher level of acceptance for uh, people in society. So uh, now we're working on a device which is a, a miniature hugging device, a, a hug ring, and uh, the, the basic idea, which I'll show you, is that uh, you can squeeze uh, the ring on your finger and it connects to the internet and uh, sends the uh, squeeze message to your partner, uh, your friend, uh, through the internet. So it simulates, uh, uh, kind of simulates the, uh, you know, the holding hands that people do in the physical world, but we can't, we can't do in the uh, uh, virtual world. So she, she squeezed her ring and then he, he received a squeeze on his finger at work and then he also can uh, squeeze his ring and uh, send the message back, send the, send the squeeze message back uh, to his partner. So it's a way of haptic communication uh, with a small uh, wearable device, uh, which is a, a ring. So it's a very uh, comfortable for people to wear such a, uh, wearable technology. Uh, that video was a little bit older version and uh, now we're uh, making an uh, even smaller version of this uh, ring and for those technically inclined, uh, basically it uh, uh, uses Bluetooth low energy, energy to uh, connect to your smartphone and uh, we also, because you can connect to your smartphone, uh, you can also connect to your uh, social networks like Facebook or WhatsApp and easily send a hug message to your friends uh, through the social networks and uh, vice versa. So you can see the uh, new uh, prototype which we're still working on, which is still a little bit too big for commercial market, but uh, uh, for research it's okay. Uh, this is the uh, electronic circuit board uh, inside the ring and uh, the next version we will make a circular uh, flexible printed circuit board so we can reduce the whole size of the, uh, of the ring. And this will be the new version once we can make a circular printed circuit board. Now, uh, uh, one thing I want to mention is that uh, 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 we don't just need to augment reality. Uh, we can make new kinds of communication once we digitize uh, the sensors. So in the physical world, uh, we will normally have one-to-one -one communication for touch. So you hug one person or you shake one person's hand. But once you, once you can augment this in the virtual world, then of course uh, you can have new modes of communication. So for example, uh, one to many, uh, let's say, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, let's say you, you just received a promotion, uh, you can hug all of your Facebook friends at the same time, uh, which you can't do in the, in the physical world. And also many to one, uh, so for example, a uh, uh, very famous uh, pop star, uh, I think millions of people would lo love to hug, hug him or her, uh, so we can make uh, new kind of services where you can send a hug to uh, uh, some famous pop star or something. So many to one and one to many is another mode of uh, haptic communication we can have uh, when we digitize these uh, uh, signals. Uh, now what about uh, another, another very important communi uh, haptic communication is uh, kiss kissing. Uh, and, uh, but uh, nobody wants to kiss the smartphone uh, because uh, it's very strange to kiss glass and it's also not very realistic. So we've been working on a device that can uh, uh, send 
a, a realistic kiss sensation through the internet. And the device has uh, uh, pressure sensors and also pressure actuators to uh, transmit a kiss system. And uh, let me just show you a video of this now. So uh, these, this is our pro uh, early prototype. So these two uh, people are uh, chatting online through Skype and then they can pick up their small robot and put it to their lips and it measures the pre pressure sensor and, and transmits it to their partner. But it's a bi-directional control system so the average uh, pressure is due to both, both sides uh, uh, kissing. So uh, we made it into a very uh, cute uh, form factor and the reason is because uh, our, our early, our first version was kind of like a, a human head with lips and uh, everyone said that looks like a zombie. Uh, so nobody wanted to kiss that. So instead, uh, I believe not, not re non-realistic is better for this kind of uh, application. <clears throat> So the, uh, we're working on a smartphone version now so that you could plug into your iPhone and uh, similarly we have a pressure uh, sensor and also v uh, artificial lips. And so then uh, you can uh, see your partner uh, with a video call and then you can uh, give them a kiss with the Kissinger device uh, through the internet. Uh, now, uh, I want to just show very quickly. Uh, this is this is not this is not my work. This is a, a work of a, a friend and colleague in Osaka University, Professor Hiroshi Ishiguro. And um, the reason I want to show it is because they uh, uh, did a very interesting study recently uh, hug, with this hugging. They made a system called Hugvi, which was uh, a hugging robot. And uh, what they also they collaborated with a medical school, and they measured uh, in real time. Uh, the person's uh, cortisol uh, count of the blood, and they found uh, when you communicate with uh, you know with the phone or, or communicate with this robot, even though the, the actual message was the same, uh, when you communicate with this form factor, uh, people's uh, cortisol level dropped. That means they're less less stressed. Uh, so the importance is that. Uh, there, we, we should not just think about the logical uh, information aspect of the communication, but the form, for example, providing touch can uh, uh, lead to a much better emotional communication. I'll just show you a quick video of this Hugvi. The Hugvi is a cushion in a minimalistic human form. It contains a pocket into which you can put your mobile phone transforming it into a physical communication medium. The shape of this huggable cushion is based on the Talanoid robot developed by Osaka University's Professor Ishiguro. It contains a microcontroller and vibrators which match the characteristics of the caller's voice, so people can have a richer communication experience when talking on the phone with loved ones. <laughs> Okay, uh, so to uh, get to the last part of my talk, uh, I will talk about the now smell and taste uh, interfaces. Uh, now, as I mentioned, uh, touch and taste and smell are very rarely used uh, for augmented reality, but uh, they are very important. And uh, I talked about the importance of touch, but also taste and smell are highly important sensors. In fact, they're the only two sensors that 
c connect to the limbic system of the brain. And the limbic system of the brain is responsible for the part of uh, your emotions and your memory. So it is actually true that a smell can subconsciously trigger a memory. You might have experienced this. You smell something and it reminds you of your grandmother. Uh, or uh, trigger uh, an emotion. So uh, the, the uh, things such as the aromatherapy uh, re really can uh, help to change your uh, emotion. But uh, unfortunately, it's still very difficult to communicate by uh, smell and taste uh, through uh, through the internet and that is because of the fact that they're chemical based and we can't transmit chemicals through uh, wires or radio waves. So uh, that means it's not very scalable for augmented reality or for internet. Uh, actually, uh, there's, there's been people who have been thinking about uh, this uh, smell interface for quite a long time. If, I think the first interactive smell system was this uh, Sensorama uh, built in the 60s, of course, in California, uh, where all the crazy things happen. And uh, you can notice that it has not only 3D uh, motion picture, but it also has aromas, uh, it also has a smell. Unfortunately, it was uh, way ahead of its time, so uh, uh, they didn't sell uh, even a single unit, although you can find the pattern online, and, and it's a very interesting pattern to read. Uh, we started looking at uh, how can we use smell and taste as uh, communication and uh, so we've been looking at, for example, systems that you can cook together through the internet. Uh, for example, grandmother and granddaughter cooking a dish together and you uh, can sense each other's uh, uh, dishes' uh, smell and colour. Uh, also, for example, sending uh, messages which are edible. Uh, so, for example, send your, uh, send your mother a birthday card if she's in a remote place and you can't make it to home, but she could not only read the birthday card but eat it as well, and it could have a very nice taste. Uh, similarly, we think uh, in the future we can uh, have things like 3D food printers. Already now, 3D printers are available, but uh, now we can also print using food. So you could des design some food on the computer and then send it to someone's, uh, someone through the internet and it prints on the printer. This is a very early prototype we did, uh, which was a food printer. Which brings people together for communication and entertainment. As an extension of this social fund, our food genie provides a novel and seamless system to enable communication through edible food which breathes playfulness into people's everyday life. By printing out three-dimensional edible food design through digital drawings, the routine activity like preparing breakfast in the morning can turn out to be an interactive and playful way. Using a simple-to-use intelligent interface, Dan can compose an edible message. He can choose what components and flavors to include and then send the composition to the Food Genie wirelessly. Then, the synchronous printing is done in three dimensions with multiple flavors using accurate step motor control and triple syringe food material injection. Multiple types of edible material can provide variations in flavor, color, and texture, providing exponential eating experiences to communicate complex, nonverbal communications. Okay, uh, and we also made systems that uh, you can send a smell through, uh, like kind of head mount display, but it's a smell, smell head mount display, and send, send smell to your communication partner. Um, now, uh, there has been some other research actually uh, also done in Japan uh, for projecting smell, right? Because if you think about it, if I release a smell here, everyone can uh, smell the same smell. But what if I want to send apple, apple smell to you and uh, peach smell to, to you? Then we need a way of projecting, uh, projecting the smell. And uh, so the, there was some research where uh, using vortex rings, uh, you can send a using vortex rings and an air cannon, you can project uh, smells uh, to someone. Oh, I think I'm running, out of, running a bit late, so I'll skip this video. You can get the idea. What I do want to show you is, uh, instead, is uh, a work that we've uh, been making prototypes in the lab to uh, allow communication of smell, especially through uh, mobile phones. And uh, so uh, we've been, we've been 
uh, making devices that you can send a smell to someone uh, through the internet uh, using their mobile phone. And uh, you can see the uh, development. We started off with pretty clunky and big uh, prototypes uh, on the left, and we're getting smaller and smaller. And, and uh, now this uh, device uh, called a Senti, uh, you can uh, e easily plug into your mobile phone, Android or uh, uh, iOS. I'll show you a quick video of this system and of now. from the history of mankind. And now, 2013, introducing a whole new approach to food, tasting and savoring food with your nose. This means uh, nose barbecue. How to one, choose. Two, insert. And you can also put them together to communicate, uh, make new smells together. Okay, uh, so um, we actually did a, a project uh, uh, last year with a, a restaurant in Spain called Muguritz, and uh, Muguritz and uh, Chef Andoni, who you can see in the picture there, uh, one of the top top three chefs in in the world, and uh, we developed a system that you could virtually cook one of their signature di signature dishes and release the smell. Uh, so it's a, like a smelling uh, cooking cooking uh, app. Uh, this was the dish that we simulated, and uh, it was successfully released in uh, a conference called Madrid Fusion. Um, we also have worked with uh, uh, Oscar Mayer. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone knows Oscar Mayer here in Finland, but it's a very big, uh, small goods manufacturer in uh, 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 America, and they made us a device that you can uh, make a bacon smell alarm clock. So you can wake up to the sound and smell of uh, bacon uh, like this. And of course, uh, uh, they hope that you can buy more bacon as well. Uh, now, I, do, uh, I have the devices here, and you can try them uh, later in the afternoon. But I'll just give a quick demo. So uh, I'm simulating someone sending me a message. And then uh, hopefully, you can see the uh, device is uh, outputting uh, the smell. Hopefully you can see from there, and it's a kind of like a floral, floral scent uh, that I will give a demo today. Uh, now, as I mentioned, uh, this still, this these kind of devices still have a problem because you, everyone needs to have these uh, in their phone. If you if you want to send a smell message to uh, your friend, then they also have to have a senti. So uh, it's not partic it's not very scalable. Uh, we need something that can transmit taste and smell uh, without using uh, without using chemicals. And uh, so uh, now we're working on devices to do this. And uh, so we have a uh, working we've been working on a device that can can uh, uh, stimulate the tongue receptors and, uh, uh, and directly uh, produce uh, stimulation to produce artificial uh, sensation of, of taste. 
so uh, the tongue um, can measure basically uh, uh, five tastes, sour, salty, sweet, bitter, and umami. So uh, it's still limited to those basic tastes, but we can stimulate those tastes without chemicals. And the important thing is that uh, using this device, you can send someone a taste signal through the internet because there's no chemicals involved. Uh, so now I'd like a, a volunteer to try uh, this virtual electric taste machine. You have a virtual sour taste. And uh, it's been cleaned with uh, medical alcohol, 96 degrees. So, <laughs> uh, so would anyone brave? Yes, yes. Tom, yes. Uh, don't worry, it's very safe. <laughs> okay, please don't worry. Yeah, please have a seat. And uh, uh, please put your tongue in between these two silver electrodes. Okay. All right, inside, in between yep. here, there. Yep. Okay. And now it's off. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, uh, turn it on and you will receive a sour sensation. Uh -huh. Yeah, good. And I'm going to increase the current now, a little bit stronger uh, taste, yeah. And I will turn it off. Now, so you can see that it's turned off now. So, <laughs> so could you? So, so this uh, directly uh, stimulate the uh, receptor to get an artificial perception in in your in your brain. Yeah. So, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Very brave. <laughs> thank you. Let's give him a clap. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we also. Uh, 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 we also aim to do, in, and by the way, you can try this uh, in the afternoon uh, in, the, in the demo session. Uh, we also uh, want to do uh, smell without uh, chemicals, but this is going to be a, a lot more difficult. Uh, the reason is because uh, actually we don't smell through the nose, uh, the, it's just a, a passage for the air to flow, but the actual smell sensor is the olfactory bulb, which is uh, actually. Uh, on top of the palatine bone. It's basically on top of the back of your mouth. And uh, so we, um, we can't really stick electrodes there because there's a lot of muci and uh, also probably be very painful. Uh, so instead, we're, developing, we're aiming to develop a system uh, which we can stick on the back of, back of your mouth like a, a sports uh, mouth guards and using magnetic fields to stimulate electrical signal in the olfactory bulb and to produce an uh, artificial smell. Uh, but that's still, that's still very much a work in progress. So to fi f uh, f finalize, uh, I just want to say, similar to what I was saying about the uh, touch, once we digitize the senses of smell and taste, we will be able to have completely new kinds of communication, which we uh, so at first, uh, people will want to reproduce the physical world. For example, send someone a chocolate smell or send someone a strawberry smell if it's their birthday. But uh, next, we will uh, make new kinds, of, uh, new kinds of interaction. So for example, uh, a child now is very difficult to cook in the kitchen because there's fire and knives and a lot of dangerous things. But what about if your kid could program uh, on their computer or their iPad, uh, you know, like GarageBand, but GarageBand for food, uh, make a new recipe and then send it to their grandmother through, through the internet. She can uh, virtually smell and taste it. Uh, as, as I mentioned, we work with uh, uh, Muguritz and Chef Andoni. Famous chefs like uh, him uh, in the future can uh, send their uh, flavor of their food through the internet, and you can experience it through augmented reality. And maybe you can see the, see the 3D food, and you can also taste and smell it. And also, as I mentioned, uh, uh, communication uh, is very important. So it, no, if you think about it, normally when you meet someone, uh, uh, you, you go and eat lunch or eat dinner, you eat together. It's a, very, it's a human bonding experience. And so we, we can't do that through the internet. But once we can have virtual taste and smell, we can eat uh, together through, through the internet, virtually eat. So uh, to uh, summarize, uh, now uh, the internet 
uh, an augmented reality is very much about focusing on audio-visual and about uh, interfacing through a glass. And uh, let's all work together to bring a full five-sense multi-sensory communication through the internet in, in the future. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much for a really inspiring talk. Uh, now we have some time for questions. Uh, feel free to an answer any questions. Hello. Th thank you for your speak. It was awesome. Uh, I was pondering about this uh, thing that you can touch people. Uh, via the internet, yes. and uh, let's say in the situation that Alice and Bob are touching each other, and then Eve comes to the line, and without their knowledge, knowing, alters the messages. Isn't that kind of funneling without permission, touching without permission? <laughs> and now to think, there are uh, things in a sexual matter, in the same. Is there any kind of study about this that you can uh, alter this kind of uh, augmented reality of others? Yes, yeah, a very good question. Um, so I didn't have time to talk in details, but we did a, we did a study with, uh, with the uh, hugging system and uh, uh, with uh, uh, partner who was a professor in the psychology department and uh, so uh, for anyone who's a psychologist the, the psych psychological tests are very very narrow they want to <laughs> test some A or B right so basically uh, uh, a, a standard test in in psychology is to watch some scary image or scary movie and you can measure people's fear response so their heart rate and their uh, skin conductivity because you sweat more when you're scared uh, and uh, so there was three, three types of tests. Uh, one was uh, uh, actually your friend holding your hand uh, physically. Uh, second one was uh, we, uh, the friend uh, virtually uh, touch you through uh, the internet. And uh, the third one is we told the person uh, you're going to get random, hug, random hugs from the computer. Okay? And the interesting thing was that uh, 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 first result was uh, the virtual touch had almost the same effect as physical touch. So that's a very good, good thing to know that uh, uh, we can have very similar response by virtual touch. But the strange result was that even we told the person a computer is touching you, uh, they also had decreased uh, fear response. So, <laughs> uh, and I think the reason is because touch actually uh, has a lot of connections to uh, the subconscious part of our brain, uh, so uh, we can affect your, uh, people's emotion uh, uh, even if they're being touched by a computer. So back to your question, uh, uh, if, e even if someone sends a, a, a touch that's not, not the person they think, it's still I think uh, it could be uh, uh, increase their happiness. Uh, so, so, so the, the, uh, I think the, it, it doesn't have such uh, bad consequences, uh, the scenario you, you were uh, talking about. So the second part of your question was, <laughs> second part of your question? Uh, well, uh, you have any research on this matter, what's the question, so you yeah. have some research. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, uh, and uh, so I think in the future, uh, uh, we, uh, we, we, we will also not just touch uh, people you know, for example, you know, uh, parent and children, uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, but uh, already now people uh, really like some virtual character, like a, a game, game character. Uh, so they, I think in the future people want to touch, touch the virtual characters as well. Thank you. Do you have any other questions or comments? Uh, 
yes, uh, I was wondering, has there been any research on uh, augmenting the sense of balance? Uh, yes, yes, in fact, one of my uh, former uh, collaborators, Professor Inami, uh, you can check on Google Masahiko Inami, and they uh, 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 use some uh, electrical stimulation of the, uh, uh, I think, gl gland or something <laughs> which is on the side of your ears. And uh, you can uh, get people uh, think they're walking in a straight line, but actually they're, they're moving in circle because uh, their the balance has gone out. So yes, you can do that using uh, electrical stimulation. Uh, check the, uh, afterwards you can uh, talk to me, I'll give, give you the link, yeah. We have still time for a couple of questions if you if you have something in your mind. Okay, so as uh, Professor Jack mentioned, uh, he will be demoing those uh, devices in the afternoon during the uh, long uh, expo session, and so you, you have the possibility to actually try try some of the devices, and of course you can ask ask more questions uh, at that time. Oh. <laughs> no, and I would like to thank you for your presentation and coming coming uh, to our conference. And here's a little present for you. Thank you. Thanks, Raj. Thank you. Let's take a photo too. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.